Hey, Vinyl Community, it's Mazzy, and um, Chris has a spins say that sometimes I whisper. <laughs> I guess there's a, many sides to the Mazzy uh, video collection, to the Mazzy channel. There's the whack a mole there's the manic Mazzy, where I'm like a hyperactive child. There's a theatrical <laughs> Mazzy, where I do accents and be a little silly, and then there's a whispering Mazzy. I never thought of it as whispering. I just, I want to touch you. <laughs> that sounds creepy now. I want to just, I don't need to yell because the microphone's right here. Anyway, this is uh, the first of the, of 2020 of vinyl finds. I don't do things called vinyl finds, but this is basically what it is. With some shout out, uh, not just to, just to shout out, but they relate to some music I'm gonna show. So, um, first of all, there's a new kid on the block. Now, some people are offended when I say new kid, even though someone's an adult. My father, Mr. Maslow, Maslow Sr. as I'll call him, was born in Yugoslavia, came to San Francisco in the Bay Area when he was 11 years old, and was a very polite, wonderful uh, gentleman. And he used to call me and my friends kiddos when we were well in our 30s. So I just do it as a nice gesture. So I'm offending someone about saying kiddo. I'm not saying you're you're young, but you're young at heart. You're younger than I am, that's your, anyway. So, um, Chris. There's a new boy, Chris, on the block. And I hate to say boy, that's from the Southern boy things. But this is not a Chris from the South. This is Chris. His channel's called The Long Cut. He's only made two videos so far, and he is a mutual friend of mine. I, just, I don't know him really well, but I've hung out with him over the years uh, several times, only with the archivist. He's a really good friend of the archivist, Amanda, um, who will be back uh, next week. But um, Chris and, um, well, the long cut Chris and Amanda, <laughs> archivist Amanda, uh, had worked together for a while at a music-related online thing, which I won't get into. He may share that at some point or not. I'm going to put a link down here, but um, two reasons I'm bringing it up, because he's brand new. He's doing some uh, personal takes on videos, uh, very autobiographical. And those of you, uh, in terms of what he's into, just to give you a taste, though, I think those of you who might be into this, these artists and this genre, even though he's into other things. He's a big Springsteen fan, so right off the bat, that's one thing. But he's also a huge fan of Wilco and all the associated acts. Um, well, I won't get into, but it reminds me, because I did today pick up this reissue of Uncle Tupelo Anodyne. Now, I have had this on compact disc, so I know the album and I do enjoy it. And uh, this is um, Start Your Ear Off, Ear Off Right, one of the Rhino series. And um, Rhino is putting out, you know, they have these special series like Summer of Love and Rocktober and things like that, where they do pretty much really nice reissues. Uh, not all, but usually analog based, uh, very nice pressings and packaging. I didn't even know these were coming out. This one happens to be uh, in clear vinyl. So Chris, I don't know if you're a completist. You already have this, I'm sure. Maybe not this version, but you already have the record. So this reminded me, I'll put a link down to Chris. And please, if you're into Wilco and uh, the Americana type acts, I think he's gonna be into other things too. Subscribe to uh, The Long Cut. Again, link here below. I saw they put out one of my favorite albums, Warren Zevon's Excitable Boy. Um, on some kind of colored vinyl. I didn't get it because I love the original pressing. The original pressing sounds fabulous. There was a time where I would have got it anyway, but I think I'm good. I think I'm at the point of, for the most part, stopping to buy multiple records. But Uncle Tupelo Anodyne, and this originally came out in 1993. So, you know, not, what's it, 17 years ago? No, 27 years ago, Jesus, even older. Uh, the next shout out, oh, by the way, uh, I got a free Rhino calendar, okay? So, 2020 Rhino calendar. I got one a couple years ago. They're kind of fun. So, I think at some retailers, brick and mortar locals, if you buy um, any of these titles, you might be able to get a free Rhino calendar. So, you know, 
Rhino, Wea, a lot of Wea acts. I don't need to show you every, oh, Grateful Dead, you Grateful Dead kids. Kids need to uh, check out the Rhino Calendar 2020. Um, one of my channel um, subscribers who comments a lot, and I don't think he has a, a video channel, he doesn't post videos, his name is Rockio, and he sent me this, I think it's just before the, is it just before New Year's or right after New Year's, I got it, he kept um, sending me little notices and emailing me that he's gonna send it, and I'd just been so swamped, but I finally listened to it yesterday, and it's pretty cool, he actually made a record, it's a private press, I believe, Rocky O, and it's called Futility's Last Request. He also did the cover photograph, fo cover photographs. I haven't even read any details here. Um, hmm. Uh, you can get it from CD Baby. So what it is, it's very much like bee poetry, and it's not for everyone, and I don't say that in disparaging it at all, but it's a, it's a, a spoken word album for the most part. There are, is some acapella kind of vocal work and harmonica a little a bit, but it all has the background ambiance of city streetscapes. Reminds me of New York City. I mean, in my mind, that would be New York City. And of course, I love this kind of stuff. In, my, in a perfect world, uh, having a digital version of this is great because I love doing mix uh, CDs and playlists where I have maybe a two minute spoken word section going into music, jazz, rock and roll, punk, whatever. Um, because this reminded me, I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment, but I'm a big fan of beat poetry, obviously growing up in San Francisco, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, uh, Michael McClure, City Lights Books, Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac. And this is a Rhino collection on, Rhino had a, a sub label called World Beat Records and mostly CDs in the 90s. This is 1990. They did a, a box set called Beat Generation, which had uh, campy stuff like uh, Ed Burns Cookie from 77 Sunset Strip with Jack Kerouac with uh, jazz influence, things like that. But these are uh, mostly spoken word types of things of Jack Kerouac, a series of records um, and collections of things. So there's uh, outtakes from blues and hike sessions. Uh, I won't read it all out, but Steve Allen show type of thing. But I mean, Jack Kerouac, the whole beat poetry really interests me and I love it. So um, I want to thank Rocky for sending me this record and for reminding me about my Jack Kerouac collection. So I'm going to listen to this once. And 2018 Coffee Stained Records at So North Beat Beat Poetry. And I don't remember, I think he sent me a couple emails and I apologize, Rocky, if I didn't pay attention. I've had a house full of, of guests for the last month. Um, the first song's called Jazzy. I guess he could have done a special edition and called the first cut Mazzy. But it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, Drumbeat Levy, Filibuster, Dylan in a record store. I mean, so much of the beat poetry uh, thing and I love this kind of stuff. So I wanna thank Rocky O for sending me this. Um, my good buddy Coleman from Marin County, California, Coleman and I, he's one of my uh, buddies. He hasn't done a whack-a-mole video with me. He's still in the Bay Area. He's got a great, great band called Pride and Joy, an R&B Motown soul band. They do a lot of corporate events, parties, club shows, weddings. So if you want a great, great uh, soul funk band, not really funk, but a soul R&B band for parties, Pride and Joy, they're fucking amazing. I think they've been together like 37, 38 years now. But uh, he picked this up for me and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, ow, this is a great, um, uh, this was a record store day thing that I didn't uh, pick up and it's Eddie Griffin and Eddie Lockjaw Davis live at the Penthouse. The Pent Penthouse, before my time in Seattle, was a, a, a famous jazz club in Seattle. Probably equivalent to the Black Hawk in San Francisco and uh, maybe earlier than the Keystone Corner in San Francisco the Jazz Club. But with all the shit happening and going on here, plus the whack-a-mole 50th and everything, I get this package and I thought I just, I got actually three packages yesterday, plus two other packages arrived for one of my house guests who's been staying here. And I just kind of opened them up thinking the things I ordered maybe through Discogs or eBay and I didn't even look at the return address. So I'm 
I'm doing my little uh, picture, send it to my buddies, uh, Jazz Shit Brooks and Coleman in San Francisco. And he asked me how this was. And I said, it's great, you know. I said, you should listen to it. I sent him a link to listen to this on YouTube. It turns out we discussed it back and forth about a month ago and, and his local in Mill Valley, California, Village Music, had a couple copies and he asked me if I wanted one. And I said, apparently I said yes. So he picked up one for him and one for me. And I totally forgot about it. He thinks I'm crazy. He thinks I maybe need a, a mental operation or something. But that's the thing. When you're 65 years old, I remember details. You've seen my videos. Details that go back, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. But I can't fucking remember what happened a month ago or a week ago. So, sorry, Coleman, but thank you. Um, the check is in the mail. It's not actually yet because I don't know how much. But... Um, Looking, I, I listened to the first disc on this, and it's two LP set. Loved it, loved it. Okay, um, I'm gonna go through some uh, things I picked up. I think I might have showed this already because um, it didn't make my best of last year, but it would have. It just came in under this, under the um, just in time, and everyone showed it. I first showed it from, uh, got introduced to this from Dave, uh, local bandography, and it's Emma Jar. 10-1, Tenery one Gorgeous record, great recording. Uh, there's people like Warren Ellis on it. Uh, Warren Ellis is, you know, from the Bad Seas with Nick Cave. Um, anyway, uh, great record, double record, I believe. Yeah, double record. It's all like Ali Farka Torre, and I don't have any of their earlier stuff. I didn't really know about them, I don't think. But this is a great, a great album, one of the best albums of last year. It wasn't again on my list. But since then, I've seen, um, you know, all the Southern Boys, plus uh, I think Steve Carlson showed it. And I highly recommend it if you like um, world music, uh, Africana, guitar playing, uh, gorgeous and kind of moody, but with a really kind of, that kind of uh, Middle Eastern uh, vocal, uh, vocal, actually African, sorry, not Middle Eastern, but um, vocals, really great. Other things like, oh, this was another one, a Motorik 241, 241? <laughs> Alex, I think I first saw him uh, show this last year, and he played it, and this just arrived in December, and I finally, uh, uh, the clip that he played, I fell in love with as well, and now I've seen several other uh, VC members, kind of avant-garde, but jazzy saxophone player. Uh, I believe she's Russian. Am I right about that? Muriel Grossman. Uh, but really kind of, uh, I don't want to say surreal and um, spirit, spiritual jazz a little bit uh, in that vein, but a really good recording. I'm not quite sure about the cover because uh, I'm an art snob, but um, it doesn't really matter. It's still a great record. Had to order this online and, and uh, track it drown, but it's, it's very good, very good spiritual jazz. Uh, in terms of the most of, most of the stuff I'm going to show is jazz and things I picked up new and used. Uh, Sunday morning, Grant Green, gorgeous, gorgeous record. Not just a Sunday morning record, but there I think this is the Plaid Room, private uh, blue label pressing. Sounds awesome, beautiful pressing, beautiful record. Um, highly recommended. It was an original Blue Note. I love that these other Blue Note things are. Uh, are happening, not just the Tone Poets and the Blue Note 80s. There's been some uh, other side labels that seem to be licensing this stuff pretty nicely. So that. The other one, an album that I've been wanting for years and I just never pulled the trigger, and it kind of showed up cheaper for like a minute on Amazon, it was in my uh, wish list or my inbox or something, was Le Grand Jazz. Um, Michelle Legrand, French, arranger, composer, orchestrator, a lot of soundtrack things. Um, La Grand Jazz. This is a record, I believe it's from the late 50s, early 60s originally. Um, oh, recorded in 1958. So 1958 on Columbia Records in this country. I don't know if that if it actually came out in this country in 1958. I don't know the history. Gorgeous record, a little more orchestra. 38 American jazz musicians. 31, excuse me, I'm trying to up it a little bit, but 31, including featuring Miles Davis. And if you like the orchestrated side of Miles Davis, 
you'll love this record. I mean, it's it's amazing. Just, I mean, Herbie Mann, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Bill Evans. Not everyone's on every cut. Um, Paul Chambers, Ben Webster. I'm just naming a few going through here. Uh, Hank Jones, Art Farmer, Donald Byrd, Phil Woods, Tao Macero, plays baritone sax. I didn't know, you know, Tao Macero uh, produced some of the great, great um, Miles Davis sessions and edit a lot of his things. Don Elliott, Milt Hinton. Anyway, a lot of others, but gorgeous, gorgeous record. Highly recommend it if you like the more orchestrated version of Miles. But um, in, it's just a, a, an amazing record. I've wanted this record for years, and I uh, this is a, a Columbia 2017 reissue, and it sounds amazing. This is a record I've been wanting for years, and it's also been in my basket. This is a MoFi version. It was actually, it went down to something like $25, which for a MoFi is pretty great. And one of my favorite covers, uh, photographs for Bill Evans' record. This is Bill Evans and uh, Jim Hall, Undercurrents. Undercurrent, beautiful record too. Another beautiful kind of Sunday morning moody record, but Bill Evans, love that. Okay, uh, just some other uh, things. I just picked up this, uh, Ella Fitzgerald. I have the music on CD and in other uh, collections. The Duke Ellington Songbook. The reason I'm showing this again, or this, t this t thing is, I've done two videos and I'd still never seen anyone show these fucking records. Verve, double albums, uh, all released from 1976 through about 1980. And what's beautiful about them, they um, are all analog. I'd say not all of them, 80, 90% of them were cut by Robert Ludwig, so they're RLs. They're actually pretty cheap. This one was uh, $13 for a double record. I find them anywhere from six to $8 up to $20. And half the time, or most of the time, 90% of the time, or 83.7% of the time, they look like they've never been played in the late 80s. Uh, but they're gorgeous sounding records. And to me, it's a great way to build up a, a semi-traditional jazz catalog without breaking the bank. And they're beautiful covers, beautiful artwork, wonderful liner notes, uh, some by Leonard Feather, the great jazz critic. I don't know who wrote this one. Um, I don't know. Anyway, this is this one particular is a Robert Ludwig cut. Um, most of these are produced were produced by Norman Granz, the founder of uh, Verve, and uh, who happened to manage um, Ella Fitzgerald, who was the original first artist on Verve. I love Ella, one of my favorite my favorite jazz vocalists of all time, and um, I I probably have in one way or another between CDs and vinyl almost virtually everything that she recorded. Just a stunner. But these are great, and usually I find this is like a pristine copy, inside and out. But this Verve series, again, this one was 1980, so Apollodor uh, distributed these back in the day, and from 76, so I think I have them all. I'm not finding a complete list anywhere, even on Discogs, so I need to kind of look through. But thanks to the archivist and Discogs, um, her input, I have all my jazz in there. So now when I'm in a store, I know which of these, even though by memory I kind of know the covers, I know which I have and which I don't. Uh, seen around here a lot, I do have a copy. My copy has been trashed. I found a used copy because my original copy went with the Purge of 93. So this seems to be a beautiful copy. It looks clean on the outside, looks clean on the inside, 10 bucks. Uh, this is, the, I think, the last um, Santana record that Michael Shreve played drums on, and um, it's when he started getting a little more jazzy, um, spiritual jazzy again, to some extent. But it's a gorgeous record, Caravan Sarai, of the great um, Carl Santana, Michael Shreve, and others. Found this. Um, I used to have this one, too, and I got rid of it in the purge. What an idiot. But this is a 1973 issue, I think, 74. ABC Records. I had this because when I worked for ABC from 78 to about almost 80. So I know these records. I got used to get a lot of these records free or cheap. This is a pristine copy. I don't mind um, uh, having uh, 70s presses. Now this one only came out in the 70s. This was a um, unreleased, unavailable uh, recordings, I believe. New recordings, never previously available, exactly. So, um, 
It's nice to have this record. Love any Coltrane, again. I have no problem, I'm like, I don't need first pressings, but I'd love to get um, back all the 70s impulse pressings, because usually they're pretty clean and uh, unplayed like the originals, and not anywhere near as expensive, although they're not cheap anymore. This was a cool find, now, this, was, this is 25 bucks, but um, these are from the um, late 80s uh, fantasy records, and I believe these are the OJC edition, yeah, it is. Kenny Burrell, John Coltrane, I've never had this. Of course, I don't have an original copy of this. Um, late 50s, I believe. Rudy Van Gelder, and again, this is uh, the Jazz Classics, the OJC that came out in the late 80s. This kind of label, New Jazz Records. So, again, they're not original pressings, but for me, I want the music, I love the music, and these sound fantastic, so, um, Beautiful cover too, right? Now, if I was uh, Chris, I'd be ripping that shrink off. But I ain't gonna rip it off, Chris. Another great find, um, again, another OJC, again. These are from the late 80s. Distributed by Fantasy in Berkeley. And I'm uh, getting that hot, hot glare starting to come in on that sunlight thing. West Montgomery, so much guitar, so much guitar. West Montgomery with Hank Jones, Ray Beretta, Ron Carter, and Alex Humphreys. To me, any um, Coltrane is good. Coltrane, huh. The garbage man is here. That's what's making that noise. By the way, in the background, I don't know if you hear the music, I have a great, amazing 24 CD collection, the Centennial from 1999. Beautiful box, beautiful, hello. Beautiful box, beautiful artwork. Uh, Red Herring Design, Carol Bobolts, who I'd worked with uh, with photography and design. Great album cover, uh, reissue, and original packager. Used to work for Electra Records. Designed this whole package. I showed it another video. Thick book. This was a centennial of Duke Ellington. Again, I'm not finding a lot on the VC. What's with you all? You know, you all want Motown and Impulse and Verve and stuff, but... You know, where's the John Cole train? I mean, excuse me, where's the Duke Ellington? The Duke. This is a disc five out of 24, I believe. A lot of traditional vocals, that kind of stuff from the, you know, 30s or the 40s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Another great find, pristine copy. I love Mose Allison, uh, up there with a great vocalist. That's how he sounds. and. Uh, Young Man Blues, the Who covered stuff, Parchment Farm that uh, he originally recorded. Maybe not originally, but uh, this is with um, Mose Allison, Red Mitchell, and Bill Goodwin on Atlantic Records. But I try to pick up almost any um, Mose Allison, especially something around this time, 1968, when the Who were covering it. And this, lastly, I'm gonna end with, uh, this is a 2000 still sealed press. Sun Ra, Sun Song. I don't know this record, but um, on Delmark Records from 2001, so I'm, I went with it. You know, I go hot and cold. I'm not a completist of uh, Sun Ra, but I think this is a pretty cool thing. I've seen a few other people show it, different versions of it, so I don't know which version. Um, you know, I can't compare versions because I don't know. What year was this? I don't even know. Anyway. Uh, you've seen the, uh, you've been watching the serious side of Mazzy, the more low-key side of Mazzy, not the manic um, version of Mazzy without a uh, dialect coach to try to emulate another American accent. So thanks for watching, Vinyl Community, and um, we'll see you on the other side.